let's say we have a nursing team. The hospital is very busy. We come to the midday huddle, we sit down and immediately everyone starts saying, oh my God, I am so busy. How are you? Oh, it's so busy. How are you? It's busy, it's busy. And then I pause and I ask, let us reflect here. What is the definition of busy? What do a coach bring to the table? Like every coach says, oh, I don't bring anything. I just like let you find the solution yourself within you. Okay, so what? what's the value? Before we dive into this treasure or trove of wisdom, uh, here's a little something from the heart. You know, every subscription, every like, every share means the world to us. It's not numbers. It's about incredible community we're building together. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe, drop a like, and share with your friends. Monday Talkers, welcome back again to this week. So if you're feeling stuck in a rut, overwhelmed with stress, or maybe just yearning to reach a full of your potential, buckle up, we've got the perfect guest to help you today. To help you navigate challenges and unlock the inner rock star you have inside. Joining me this amazing Monday, amazing Magda Snowden, right? A top voice in coaching and mentoring and trailblazer into mental agile leadership. Magda, welcome on board. Thank you so much, Daniel, for this introduction. And thank you for having me here. Amazing. It was like um, nothing but to say like, welcome on board and alrighty, let's go back to Magda. Who are you and what sparked your passion for helping others achieve greatness? Wow, big question. <laughs> to help others achieve greatness. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of my background. Uh, I am an international nurse leader. Uh, mm -hmm. team transformation facilitator and a mentally agile coach. I'm also a mental health uh, first aider here for the UAE. This is what I do, but who is Magda? Magda is a human uh, that is fascinated about maximizing human potential. I think this is the answer to your question. Mm. And when I talk about human potential, I am specifically referring to the human skills. Some people might call them soft skills. So the emotional intelligence, mental agility, curiosity, empathy. But mm -hmm. here specifically, I call them human skills because we are all human and we are dealing with other humans. So this is my superpower. Beautiful. Okay. Now, let's picture this. Uh, our viewers feel uh, the effects of, of, of long week, stress cells building, accumulating. Their brain feels like a mush. So how do you help them overcome the burnout, cultivate uh, this mental agility you mentioned? And let's start with a story. Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, a story where you had uh, a client who, who totally transformed their minds. Mm. It's very interestingly that you have mentioned the word stress. Mm. We are now in epidemic of stress actually in the workplace and you have the data showing up the rates of stress, burnout in the UAE, the reports specific to GCC, like the state of uh, workplace by Gallup. Uh, most recently, Six Seconds also has released uh, a report called the state of heart. And answering your question specifically about stress, and this is where my passion lies, we need to understand the current situation. So this report that has been done on the state of emotional intelligence globally is showing that we are now in recession. So we are facing a human energy crisis. Oh. So when we talk about stress, first of all, when I work with my clients, I really want people to understand what do they mean by stress? What is the definition? Because sometimes we keep repeating the same words and we cannot really pinpoint what is the actual thing that is stressing us out. 
So I will refer, let's say, to the workplace environment. Let's say we have a nursing team. The hospital is very busy. We come to the midday huddle, we sit down and immediately everyone starts saying, oh my God, I am so busy. How are you? Oh, it's so busy. How are you? It's busy. It's busy. And then I pause and I ask, let us reflect here. What is the definition of busy? Silence in the room. What is the dictionary definition of busy? Silence. Everyone is thinking. Thinking is good. This is a start of a good coaching conversation when we mm -hmm. are silent and we are thinking. So the science behind, and I don't only coach, I also train and mentor and facilitate. The science is saying that our brain needs structure and clarity in order to complete a certain task. If we keep repeating and telling our brain that we are busy, the brain doesn't understand what is busy. So it's this continuous running like on a hamster wheel. Every day I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And as you said, Daniel, it comes the end of the week. I am so tired and stressed because I've been busy. I've been busy being busy doing what? <laughs> Then let's try to unpick this situation. When I work with clients and I ask them to replace the confusing and very often negatively worded sentence, what can we use instead of busy? We can say we are fully optimized. We have priorities. When your brain knows that there is one, two, three, four on the list to do, it will create a plan, whether we need to delegate or we need to escalate or what needs to be done in order to complete one, two, three, four. There is a structure and this is what our brain needs. It needs structure and it needs clarity. Yeah. So it's my very powerful example that worked wonders with staff or employees in, in healthcare settings where we tend to be busy all the time, 24 seven. So you're saying that be busy or I am busy is something we fake in our mind. It's not, it's no. not like we you. I'm not saying this is fake it because we mean something, but the busier, let's say the busier we get, we tend to run on an autopilot. So it's just a repeated schematic behavior and continuously I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And when we run on the autopilot and keep using these words that really have no meaning, we are just stuck in the cycle that there is no way out. But, and I understand being busy and being on autopilot is a protective mechanism because when humans are under pressure and you know, work environment is busy, we just go for the easiest possible solution. So instead of trying to explain to your boss or to your coworker that I have this to do and I have another task and patients are coming and they ask me to complete this project, then it's easy just to say I'm busy and start doing the things. But it is not producing the results uh, that you are intending for and it is causing unintentionally stress. Mm. So the exit from this is what? I mean, uh, in nursing, maybe it's a routine, daily routine they have. To have this true, you know, tour of the patient, get back and whatever. I don't know. I'm not so familiar, but mm -hmm. what's the exit? I mean, if we stop saying I'm busy, how mm -hmm. do you, how this feeling can enhance our performance? Mm. So in coaching, we say that behind every word, there is a world. So mm. when you create for yourself the word of busy, as I say, you're going to stay there in this stuck position, feeling stressed every single day. At the end of the week, even though the weekend is coming, you are so tired, you will not enjoy it. Mm -hmm. so when I work with my clients, I work on something called reframing. So how can we phrase specific sentences in a better way? So we are looking to the future and we are looking for solutions. 
instead of just keep repeating the same closed sentence that keeps us stuck in the same loop. So reframing using positive language. Again, for this to happen, we need to be able to pause and appreciate what is happening. But when we are busy and continuously running on an autopilot, we sometimes feel that there is no time to pause or we feel guilty for pausing because patients are waiting or our colleagues need help and the hospital is, you know, meeting the targets and so on. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's all a cycle. But That's we need to start... As, assume another thing. Look, mm -hmm. I want to reverse the, let's say, the, the perspective. Okay, we're looking at the nurses. What about nurses looking back at the at the coach? Let's say mm -hmm. um, they have conquered the burnout beast, and they all have we we have um, high fives all around. But now they are diving into the world of coaching, and it feels like everyone, even their dogs, are are coaches these days. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So how come? someone identify the perfect coach who truly aligns with their goals and values. I mean, what are the some, let's say, red flags to watch mm. out for? Mm. Great question, because, uh, you know, even I had this conversation with my coaching colleagues recently, like you see coaches all over the shop. Mm. Uh, then it's full of coaching. Everyone is a coach. There is a coach for this, coach <laughs> for that. Number one, when you are looking for a coach, check the credentials. So the ICF is the gold standard for coaching and there are certain levels. There is the entry level ACC, then you have the PCC meet and you have the master level coaching. So there is credential leveling. See what other qualifications these coaches hold. Coaching is science driven. It's not just coaching and that's it. This is what people don't understand and perhaps it's difficult to, to understand actually what coaching is. So given my example, I also hold certification in positive psychology, neuroplasticity, mental health first aid, uh, mental health advocacy in the workplace. So there is all the other disciplines that are backing up the coaching science. Mm -hmm. For us to understand, for example, how change management works, why humans are resisting change, why there is emotional reaction to a situation, this is all backed. At, this, at the back of coaching. So this is all the science that is underpinning. Red flag, if you ask me. Yeah, if this is fake or this is red code. I mean, oh, does say, it you know, mean if, like... If someone does it... doesn't have any credentials, uh, yeah. if they're not able to prove uh, how many, for example, coaching hours they have, because for the first credential, you, you need to have at least 100 hours of coaching plus certain hours of coaching education. Uh, second level, which I hold is the PCC. You also need a certain level of coaching education. So it's not that you just complete this uh, coaching training. You need to continuously um, educate extra webinars, courses, adding extra tools and qualification. So, and really, Ask around, you know, is there a recommendation? Because good coaches are really being recommended by other people, someone who have worked with them. So it's not only the fake testimonial on the website, mm -hmm. it's really, can anyone recommend you? This is how mm. I would start. So I see a credential plus recommendation and see what else this coach, what is the story? Because if you're looking for a coach, let's say you are a leader. You want someone from the leadership background. You want someone from a similar background. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay let's look at this one uh coaching is an investment okay and yeah. everyone wants to know how do you measure success of a coach mm -hmm. like uh, what are these tangible things someone can track their progress and ensure it's paying off and mm -hmm. in another side of this question what do do what do a coach bring to the table like every coach says, oh, I don't bring anything to you. I just like let you find the solution yourself within you. Okay. So what what's the value? Perfect question. Actually, I will ask, answer the second question first. Uh, 
Even though the definition of coaching is like the co-creative process of asking questions in the right way so the client is finding the solution, it doesn't work this way. I'm not only here to ask you a question and you're going to find the solution. Uh So before we dive deep into the coaching, let's say I have a client, we sit before the coaching starts on something called strategy call or a chemistry call. We need to make sure that we are compatible, that I have the right tools for whatever issue you are bringing to the table. So let's say someone is coming and they are struggling with action taking. Majority of people struggle with action taking. Why do we struggle with action taking? Because it's really scary. There is no guarantee on the other side. If I take this action, I'm going to get 100% of this result. So we coach the person on the process. I was trained on a transformational model. So, you know, there are specific components in the model where I address the whole being. So it's the mind, body and spirit. And with this structure process, we address the awareness, action taking, accountability, how the person is going to progress. So if you come to me with a specific problem, yes, you will get the results, but you need to understand that you're going to be the one taking actions. Whatever awareness there is in the session or after the session, you need to go and act on it. You cannot just sit in the session, listen, oh, wow, I discovered this and then nothing happens. The Mm -hmm. key is in action. Okay, the action comes from my side, but the solution, this is the main Mm -hmm. question comes mm-hmm. from coach, me, we both discover, how does it come? It's a co-creative process. So in coaching, I partner with the client. We go together wherever the client wants to go. Even if during the coaching session, they will change the direction. I confirm and we go together. So mm-hmm. we are still the solution. You know, there are different types of coaching. Some of them are solution oriented, and then you have the transformational model that are dealing with, with much bigger um, issues. So it really depends. If you're coming just, let's say, I have issue with productivity. So you're gonna use a different tool to help that person design the plan, how they need to structure themselves in a better way, self-management, time management, so they can improve the productivity. Mm -hmm. And here I will probably make another clarification. When a person is coming to me and saying, I struggle with productivity, the first question that I would probably ask is, what is the definition of productivity for you? Mm -hmm. Never assume that I know what they want. Mm -hmm. There world is totally different to my world Mm. Mm. yeah of course okay let's go back to your specialty which is mental agility first let's Mm. let's introduce the, the the audience to what does that mean okay mental agility simple definition is the ability to deal effectively with what is going on inside us. It's a skill set. Inside us. Inside us. Emotions, values, everything that is going on inside us. And I put it under the umbrella of human skills. So it's the same basket, emotional intelligence, mental agility, empathy, Mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, if I have control over my inner feelings this means that i am mentally agile if i I did i get it right sort of i would probably rephrase the word control because for me it's a negative way you don't want to control it but for me it's rigid you want to navigate it so with our emotions what i also teach my clients There are no good or bad emotions. Our emotions are human, so we need to embrace them and understand what is the message. Every emotion is bringing a message to you. So Mm -hmm. whether you're feeling angry, happy, disappointed, there is something that has triggered this emotion inside you. And imagine a situation you are in the workplace and something has triggered you and you feel angry. 
If you are not able to navigate this emotion, accept it properly, you might lash out at another person, okay? It might be a reaction from you that is going to cause some harm, mm -hmm. maybe damage uh, in relationship, in the workplace. So for me, that's why I said in leadership, the strategic skills, the strategic acumen is as important as the mental agility. And we are now in the re leadership revolution and we can clearly see that this component really needs more development. This also helps people to perhaps develop better mechanisms to deal with stress, prevent burnout, have better relationships, not only at work, but also in their personal lives. Let's make it easy. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. More digestible. Let's have a story of how mm -hmm. mental agility has affected some performance or let's say productivity or whatever was the wrong thing within the process. How mm -hmm. mental agility did make a difference. Mm. Let's again go back. Let's say we are in the hospital. The hospital is very busy. Yeah. All, or fully <laughs> occupied or fully optimized, whatever word you want to use. We meet at the operational meeting, let's say at 1 p.m. to go through, through our reality, to see what we need to do, how we need to help each other. We sit at the table and people immediately start complaining. Oh my God. This doctor is putting these demands. He is uh, difficult. He is a troublemaker, and this per this patient is also a troublemaker. What happens in that moment when we start using labels? Troublemaker, difficult person. We stop seeing the human in front of us, and mental agility also helps us address the human in front of us. But more importantly, what else happens in this situation? Instead of looking how we can approach this situation in a different way to try to solve it and look for solution and perhaps ask this difficult doctor what else we can do to move forward, we are just deciding to put a label because it's easy. In situation when we are busy and we are on an autopilot, it's easy just to put a label. And again, we are stuck in the situation. There is a label and we will not move forward. And the whole relationship with that person is affected. And you can imagine that that team that sits at this table trying to have that meeting, most of them are likely to adopt that label and they will see that specific doctor through the lens of that label. I've seen it multiple times. It's easy. This is how human brain operates. Let us label someone so we don't have to deal with the situation. <laughs> yeah, 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 just like a newcomer will just learn from others. Uh, the first thing they will start with is to label everyone. Yes. Right? Brilliant. Wow, this is brilliant example. For the newcomer to learn who is the difficult one and who is going to help you and who is going for breaks every half an hour. Yes, brilliant. Yeah. Let's get back to your your own experience and, and let's have one story. Just like what happened, what was happening before you come in and what happened, what was the result after you came? Right, my, I have a really powerful story from a private hospital in Kuwait where I used to work 2021 till 2023. Um, I, had, I had this amazing opportunity that I got recruited for a hospital that during interview, they, they claimed that they had happiness through holistic approach in the balance scorecard and, you know, all these amazing initiatives. Of course, I was skeptical. We don't hear about these kind of workplaces that operate on these principles to have <laughs> mission and vision uh, created on this, on these happiness principles. So when I first went there, and I already had experience working in hospitals in Dubai, normal human behavior is to assume that the situation is going to be very similar. Mm. So my leadership style is a very people-oriented, very human-oriented. I've learned during the pandemic, and I try to strengthen it every single day. 
to address the human in front, to use curiosity as a point of connection. And when I ask questions, I reduce the need for labeling, um, for negative judgment, and perhaps for unconscious bias. So this is my kind of leadership. When I arrived in this facility, of course, everyone is welcoming at the beginning and they want to get to know you. But what I gathered that people were used to different kind of leadership. So going and asking just on my rounds every day a question like, how are you doing? People were silent. Sometimes I would face a wall of silence. There will be few nurses standing there looking at me like, you know, what's, what's wrong? <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> All leadership style it would be like the leader only comes when there is an incident or there is a complaint mm -hmm. so they could not process in their brain that i'm only coming to say hello i'm not looking for trouble <laughs> or tell them what is going wrong so it was learning for me as well right because i am very comfortable with silence especially when clients coaching clients are silent during the session but then i also met a lot of um um, awareness from my side like why is this happening what's going on in here how do I need to adjust myself so we can move forward in these situations um, you know it takes time to build trust with people right they're not gonna trust you just after one day or one week so it took me probably good three to four months till people realize that this is me and I'm walking around just first to connect and then I'm looking into business and tasks and whatever else needs to be addressed. So I think the biggest achievement, and you are looking for a good story, um, it was that during my two years in there, uh, we laid good foundations for coaching culture and changed a lot of practices in leadership uh, introduced one-to-one -one leadership training, team transformation, redesigned the coaching, strat the nursing strategy, education strategy with coaching approach. So it wasn't any more presentation, you know, you need to yeah. do this, leave the classroom and nothing happens. And specifically when I worked on team transformation transition with the education department, the results were really profound. So imagine you have a newcomer, new starter, right? And this person is struggling. It's not as fast as the other people in the unit, you know, and they start getting angry that this person is inefficient. We need to complete their tasks and what is going on. So me using this curiosity, I realized that there is a pattern. There used to be few newcomers. Who if they're assigned in this specific unit, this is the situation. What I've realized that actually the leaders in this unit did not have the people dealing skills to address the situation. They just labeled them as low performer, troublemaker, and you know, useless uh, member of staff. And how this got confirmed, when I moved this particular individual to another unit, all of a sudden the situation was totally different. They were smiling, they were happy, they were saying that they have the best mentors and they, you know, enjoying and please do not move me from that place. Mm. Again, curiosity takes time. You really need to spend time asking questions, going and observing the situation to get to the bottom of that problem. So you mentioned, you mentioned curiosity and you mentioned assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we live in is the leaders get stuck with making assumptions about ourselves or our team. Mm -hmm. How can leaders leverage curiosity to, let's say, unlock for better communication and power the, the team around it? Hmm. You know, uh, when I use uh, my mental agility leadership framework, I don't only coach. I really believe that when people know the science, why as humans we behave in a certain way they have much bigger chance of success to changing their behaviors so making assumption is a normal human behavior it's not yeah. saying you are a bad person this is how our brain operates it's easier to make an assumption and it's easier to, to put a label on someone 
in a situation that you are stressed, busy, under pressure. Mm. Curiosity, it takes time to go and ask the questions. And sometimes in situations like I get from this particular unit, it's not to just going and asking one question. You really need to embrace the situation from 360 to see what is going on. Now I discovered the issue. What am I going to do with this? I need to deal with these interpersonal skills of these highly performing leaders. They were already highly performing. The unit was running beautifully. No complaints, patient satisfied. But the interpersonal skills were really damaging, <laughs> you know, relationship mm -hmm. with other people and the new nurses coming to the organizations were suffering. So how to leverage the curiosity, you know, um, it's an awareness. When you get this awareness that perhaps you are living from assumptions and you commit to changing that behavior, is again, action is difficult. Mm -hmm. Asking the questions, if you are not the type of person that previously asked the questions, is very challenging. Mm -hmm. And again, as a coach, I can help you move from A to the final line, A to Z. Mm -hmm. But you need to make sure that you take that action and step out from your comfort zone. Okay, the time is running, and before the end, I have two questions. But don't mm -hmm. worry, they are the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> First one, what's the key takeaway you want our audience to remember from this interview? Something like will spark a positive impact in their lives. Positive impact in their lives. Take mm. away from this interview. I would say pay close attention to the words that you are using. Ask okay. yourself how many times you said that you were busy in the last week. Interesting. <laughs> okay, that's a powerful one. And second, where can our viewers connect with you to learn more about your work, maybe even explore the coaching opportunity, website, social media, spell the beans. I give some very simple locations. So it's magdasnowden.com. This mm -hmm. is my website. And if you want to dive in and book a free strategy call, you can just go to calendly.com slash mental agility with Magda. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you again. There you have it, Monday Talkers. Huge thanks to Magda Snowden uh, for sharing her expertise and helping us to unlock potential greatness within ourselves. So if you're ready to ditch the stress, uh, stop saying I'm busy, uh, sharpen your mental agility and find the perfect coaching to guide you, be sure to check the resources Magda just mentioned and connect with her directly. We'll make sure to have the links in the description below until next week keep chasing those dreams and unleash your inner rock star and remember follow like and subscribe to money talks for more insightful conversation like this one until next time stay empowered and take care thank you very much magda thank you have a lovely week and weekend Thanks. Bye -bye. thank you bye bye